freedom. At the Denver airport, Richie Havens was easy to spot. A lanky six foot six black man in cream colored flowing clothes with lots of bulky silver rings and a joyful face beaming from behind a cropped beard. His luggage squeezed into the back seat of my baby blue Volkswagen Beetle. Richie folded himself into the passenger seat. His short afro brushed against the ceiling of the car. He had an easy laugh. It was 1977, the summer before my senior year of college, and I had an internship at a small Denver nightclub. Even though I was still living in my parents' suburban home, I dreamed of being in the music promotion business. I thought it would be super cool and fun. <laughs> I was asked to drive Richie to his radio interviews. I'd never heard of him. I was told he'd played at Woodstock. I was 13 during the Woodstock Festival, so all I knew of it was from documentaries. My music of choice was sung by Donna Summer and Barry Manilow. <laughs> the kind that played in smoky discos where I would spin around the dance floor in my teal blue dance skin skirt. Richie and I made small talk during the drive to the radio station. His demeanor calmed my jittery 20-year-old energy. His voice was deep and warm and quiet. Actually, it wasn't so much quiet as it was peaceful. I'd grown up in a family where everything was fast. We ate fast, we talked fast, we did our chores fast. I'd never really experienced peaceful. I sat in the radio station lobby listening to his interview. I discovered that Richie was 36 years old, had grown up and had grown up in Brooklyn. He'd been the opening act at Woodstock. His performance of the song Freedom had been improvised, taking inspiration from the gospel song, Sometimes I Feel Like a Motherless Child. The disc jockey referred to freedom as the Woodstock anthem. He called Richie an icon. When I drove the Woodstock icon to his next interview, he told me about a book he'd recently read, The Secret Power of Pyramids. <laughs> Richie, he said, pyramid shapes create certain energy fields that if you put a razor blade inside a pyramid, it would stay sharper longer. Water placed inside a pyramid could be purified what he was telling me was amazing. Richie was so different from anyone I'd ever met. All I could do was occasionally say, wow. <laughs> I glanced over at him. He nodded and smiled. He spoke of the power of the universe, the power of the mind. His wide hands moved like beautiful birds as he explained universal truths of which I knew nothing. I was Catholic, Italian Catholic. During his final interview, Richie told the DJ, Woodstock was not about sex, drugs, and rock and roll. It was about spirituality, about love, about sharing, about helping each other, man, living in peace and harmony. Interviews complete, I pulled the VW Beetle up to his hotel. Richie asked if I'd be at his show that night. I'll be there with bells on, I said. As I drove away, I hit the steering wheel with the palm of my hand. Such a stupid comment. With bells on, I sounded like an idiot. So not cool. I doused myself with Charlie perfume and threw on a cotton dress from the trendy Denver store. It matched perfectly with my new pair of candy shoes that went click, click, click as I stepped into the nightclub. The room was nearly full. Votive candles glowed on the cabaret tables. Richie strolled onto the small stage, smiling the entire time, eyes crinkling. Gold and silver necklaces flashed against his black Nehru jacket. I felt special, that I had spent the whole day with him. Even if no one else knew it, I knew it. Richie opened with the song, Tupelo Honey, mixed with Bob Dylan's song, Just Like a Woman. His long, slim fingers wrapped around the neck of the guitar as if he were holding hands with it. He rocked back and forth on a wooden stool. 
He closed his eyes and knit his brow. He was the music. His voice came from somewhere deep inside. I was a bit self-conscious about watching him. He seemed so intimate with the song. I didn't know anything about intimacy. I was Catholic. <laughs> he opened the second set with Here Comes the Sun. Richie hovered just above the guitar, his chin almost touching the top, strumming with ferocity. At the end of the night, I stepped backstage to congratulate Richie on a great show and to say goodbye. He had changed back into loose pants and a woven shirt that went to his knees. We stood in the backstage hallway. He took my hand in his. He covered it with his warmth. My shoes froze to the linoleum. I'm going to Hawaii in a couple weeks, he said. I want you to come with me. I stared at him. I, I blinked. What will my parents say? He's black. I'm white. How will I get time off for my hostess job? I'm 20. He's old. <laughs> I felt nervous, confused. I mumbled something about work. Without a word, Richie reached into his pocket. He opened his hand. A pearl. A loose white pearl. Well, actually, two pearls. Mother Nature had magically fused together. Two, yet one. This is for you, he said. It's from Hawaii. I stared into his palm, then up at him, and back to the pearl. I'd never been offered such a gift, especially from someone I just met. Richie placed the gem into my hand. It felt cool, like a raindrop. Thank you, I whispered. I felt something in my stomach, such deep, fiery emotion, an unfamiliar feeling. The feeling grew stronger and hotter. I had to get out, away from the feeling. I waved a quick goodbye and ran to the door. I drove home without turning on the radio. A few weeks later, I purchased the book, The Secret Power of Pyramids. <laughs> <laughs> I read a few chapters, but then returned to college. Textbooks, fry boots, and keggers filled my senior year. Shortly after graduation, I moved to Dallas. I got a job, got married, and got divorced. In 1984, I was reading the Dallas Times-Herald. I turned the page to the arts section. A photo of Richie looked back at me. I studied the familiar face. His beard was longer, his smile fuller. It still drew me in. He was performing that night in downtown Dallas. The article said he'd been interviewed at the Fairmont Hotel. Adrenaline raced. I took a deep breath. I called the Fairmont. I asked for Richie Havens. Hello, he said. Um, uh, Richie, hi. Uh, this is Shelly. Um, I met you in Denver maybe seven years ago. I picked you up at the airport in my VW Bug. You probably don't remember me. Remember you, he said. I was in love with you. <laughs> in love with me? There's no way I could even receive his statement, so I ignored it, pretending he didn't say it. We chatted briefly, and then he invited me to his show. He'd leave my name with the doorman. In love with me? What? That night, I donned the sapphire blue silk dress I'd purchased on sale at Neiman Marcus. I curled my long brown hair in electric rollers. I applied red lipstick, dabbed Lorraine perfume behind my ears. I slipped into a pair of black heels. And then I had a fight with my boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> and, and in that agitated state, I suddenly felt scared to see Richie, afraid of what might happen. I hung up the sapphire blue silk dress and wiped off my red lipstick. I didn't go. I didn't go. Life resumed. I married a wonderful man, moved to San Diego, had two sweet children, built a career. Sometimes I worked with and around spiritual people. I was open to the idea of spirituality, but never fully embraced it. Sometimes my thoughts turned to Richie. In September 2013, at 56 years of age, I attended a three-day spiritual retreat. It was time. I was ready to learn more about myself and my place in the world. I wanted to be peaceful. I didn't want to be Catholic. <laughs> While getting dressed for the first day of the retreat, 
I pulled on pla black yoga pants and added a loose seafoam green top. My Merrill clogs offered plenty of room for the bunion on my right foot. <laughs> lavender, oil from s lavender essential oil from Sprouts doubled as both my perfume and deodorant. <laughs> Throughout the retreat, our teacher spoke of big topics like love, peace, and joy. She taught universal laws. She led us in a meditation. During one of them, she guided us into a pyramid. In that sacred place, we were to connect with our angels and spirit guides. I knew why we were in a pyramid. I understood its secret power. The spiritual retreat changed me. As heavy as it was, I felt lighter. I knew that the rest of my life would be different. I didn't know how exactly, but I knew it would be better, less frenzied, peaceful. My days simplified. In the morning, I lit candles and drank herbal tea. Thoughts wandered to Richie. Suddenly, I remembered the pearl. Years ago, I had it made into a pendant, but did I still have it? Five jobs, four cities, and two children allowed for many things to get lost. I fished around the jewelry box, moved aside bracelets, pushed earrings. The pearl appeared. I grabbed it. I held it against my heart. I looped a chain through it and put it around my neck. I turned on the computer and tapped in the name Richie Havens. I watched an old video of him singing, Here Comes the Sun. I was suddenly that innocent young girl with shoes that went click, click, click in a candlelit nightclub. 36 years had passed since we met. I opened the Richie Havens website. There he was. He looked like a grinning guru and emitted a beautiful light. And then I saw it. Two dates with a dash in between them. 1941 till 2013. My stomach twisted. My hand flew to my mouth. Tears burned. Richie had died five months earlier on April 22nd, 2013, Earth Day. Tears kept coming, flowing and flowing. Such deep sadness, I felt such loss, all for this man I met only once. I read his obituary. It spoke of his music, how he carried a message of love and peace and, yes, freedom, just like his song at Woodstock. Then I read that on August 18, four months after his death, his ashes were scattered from a plane over the site of the Woodstock Festival. The article said that, quote, per his very specific wishes, his ashes had been stored in inside a stone urn. The urn was in the shape of a pyramid. Thank you. First time on the VAMP stage for Shelley DeAngelis.